Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to House of Many Doors, where last episode, we finished the museum. I mean, it then ate a bunch of ambassadors, archbishops, and other representatives, and uh, disappeared, but we finished it. It's done. So, yay? Question mark? Uh, we also grabbed a job from uh, our dear friend, Pen Pusher, and we now have to go east to Founders Fires. Although, I'm kind of torn, because I, on one hand, I do need to go here for a pen pusher. I need to go here just to deal with the whole matter of the Poet Knights, and then train Tribble, Tip, Tribbled, yes, Tribbled, no, Tibbled. But on the other hand, these two are kind of more my thing. You know, searching for the lady that's been thwarting Zhang Basho so long in his attempts to, you know, start a rebellion of the horribly mistreated fungoid people. Mice and I, there we are. Look, it's not my fault I can forget their names. There are many creatures here, like the car chart. And the mice and I, and nobody else. So, no excuses. Oh well, anyway. Point is, I am kind of torn on which way I want to go. I'm kind of already started going east, though, so... Then again, that's not... Eh. Eh. Like, this is fairly well explored. This is not so much... Makes me kind of inclined to go that way. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna go Chaga and to the lady because we also failed to turn in our news at the City of Keys because I was kind of, you know, um, wise enough to leave after we, you know, had that disastrous opening. Well, I, I mean, I say disastrous. It was, um, one of a kind, you know, it was a unique experience. And now we have a wandering museum in the house. You know. So that's nice. I'm sure it's a lovely and educational place to go. Let me just, uh, fix some of that. Oh, we've gone delirious. Oh. Probably should have done something about that earlier. Well, too late for that now. Let's just go east a little bit. And then north and eh, west. Hmm. I really should have done something about that ahead of time. Eh, get over there. Hmm. Well, that's just me being short sighted. Aw, someone's sobbing. We should probably comfort them. You know, try to find out why they're sobbing. Why are you so upset, you know? We're just in this house where we're trapped forever and ever and ever and ever. You know, it's fine. You had family back on your homeworld? Not anymore, you don't. We don't know how time flows there relative to here, so for all we know, it could be just a moment passes there and they won't recognize you or... It could be multiple years pass in a single day here, in which case they're dead by now, probably. So it's fine. Don't worry about that. Why are you moving erratically? I swear I didn't actually... Okay, doesn't matter. Just a key that got stuck or something, probably. Ah, oh, and I haven't even been going the right way. Ugh. No. None of your shit today. North one more. Because I do want to clear up some of this little, you know, space on the map. Well, somebody's pa painting strange runes in my room. Aw. It's a bit of a waste of paint. Seems silly. Hmm. This has always impressed me with how much more terrifying terror is in this game rather than in Sunless Sea or in Sunless Skies either. Hmm. Things actually get much more... I don't want to say atmospheric, but like... The music really is what does it, honestly. It's very unsettling, and I like that. Oh dear. 
Come on. We've got a lot of moving to do. And not, well, we have plenty of time, I suppose. I suppose, but, you know. I want to get this done as quickly as possible so I can actually get back to the City of Keys because I kind of screwed up by panicking and leaving it instead of just sticking around and handing in my port reports. Not port reports, but news, but you get the idea. Yeah, there we go. Also, probably should have spent some time on R&R, &R, but eh. Hindsight 2020 and all that. Get ourselves to the Lady of Chagar. Have a chat with her, although I, uh, I'm curious. She's in the subconscious of the mice and I, but is she like, was she ever real is my question. Because it just seems odd. And was the Lady Mycena in nature? Because the impression I'm getting is that she's human-ish. Which might just be me, you know, assuming everything's human, but... Hmm. That's suspicious. Very, very suspicious. But we shall see in just a moment. Well, hopefully. Uh... I do have an abundance of apprehensions. You know what? Let's upgrade our guts just in case by some chance that happens to be what we need. Besides, nothing wrong with having tons of guts. There, 74. You know what? Make it 75. And make this an even 90. There we go. I imagine this will give me good chances on all the various things that might happen. Ooh. Hmm. Now nah, we'll be fine. Alright then. Shigar, an ancient fungal ruin. A Mycena city was built on this vast shelf fungus once, a city whose occult powers still defy understanding. The shelf collapsed long ago, sloughing across the floor, and it contained the lady, so let's search for her. This is going to be dangerous, says Zhang. Chaga eats its scavengers. We should make sure we're prepared before we embark. Uh, oh well, go in. You grapple to the top of the great shelf, fungus sloughing beneath your feet. Zhang Basho follows you silently. I'm not enthusiastic about heights, it admits when you reach the top, its voice under tight control. I would rather not consider going back down. Chaga is an alien sprawl, toads, toadstools rear around you like trees, glowing all the colors you can imagine and some beyond your comprehension. These are, There are scattered evidences of a long-lost civilization that called this place home. Though this close to the shelf edge, the scavengers have picked most of it clean. Hmm. Hmm, he says. Well, we've read about this place. Time to put that knowledge to good use. Ancient pages come unbidden to your mind, maps of old Chaka before the fall. The place was steeped in occultism and only half real, and the maps were barely comprehensible to modern scholars. We start to piece together a very, very rough idea of where you are. Hmm. Chaka breeds madness. You will do well if you can keep your mind clear. Delightful. And some sanity back. You reassure Zhang Basho with confident assertions, and lighthearted stories even as the darkness gathers in strange-eyed figures. A clear head will both stop you from wandering in ever tighter circles. And... Hmm. I assume we need another success, so... Let's go with this. You note the spores in the air, the patterns they draw. They're issuing from a central source, and you can use them to navigate. Hmm. I was hoping that would be the end of this. Uh, we saw this place once in a dream. You recognize the, this clearing, the neon toadstools, the scattered relics of the ancients. You dreamt of this long ago in the dream you went that way. You found it. Near the center of Chaga, where fibrous columns and temples still stand, you find the lady. He is ivory white, still, silent. It's not a mycena, but a human figure. A slender woman of aristocratic fi features carved from pale rot. One arm and one eye missing. 
Here she is, says Zhang Bashou, falling to its knees. I am sorry, my lady, we must destroy you. It is for the good of our people. The air seems very cold all of a sudden. The spores are dense overhead. <sighs> Tempting. I mean, on the one hand, they really do need to rebel, but on the other hand, she's stopping them from doing that, so... Destroying that is the right thing, but... Ugh, God, this is annoying. Um, It's a tough choice. Suggest to Zhang that this is wrong. Surely other mice and I do not want their lady destroyed. I mean, they also don't want to be, you know, tortured or made into... Ugh. Ugh. Like, some of them are having their brains ripped out and basically used as drugs. It's, like, not pleasant. Ugh, oh, dear. Um, suggest that it is wrong? Surely other mice and I do not want their lady destroyed. Presumably. Zhang Bashou looks at you, then back at the lady. She certainly seems to be a thing of power, it says, its voice suddenly full of doubt. But look at her, she's practically human. And she's stopping my mice and I from... <laughs> and she's stopping mice and I across the house from taking control of their destiny. It takes a knife from its belt. I'm sorry, but this must be done. Oh, that's... Oh, damn it. Damn it, though. Convince Zhang. Destroying the lady would destroy mice and I culture, fly in the face of their beliefs. It's not a salvation they would ever ask for or accept. But you know what? They could adapt to that, though. You can adapt to changes in your culture. But... Uh, I... Convince him. It's probably the right thing to do. Okay. Zhang Basho hesitates, then tucks its knife away. You're right. He looks up at the porcelain lady and sighs. She hasn't won, though. This won't stop me fighting. Oh, boy. By the time you get back to the Kinetopede, Zhang has sunk into a deep unhappiness, but it insists on sitting with you to nurse the scrapes and bruises you earned fighting through Chaga. For the first time in a long while, it says, I don't know where the path ahead leads. I hope I can stick by your end to the end. <laughs> by your side to the end. Ugh. I don't know if we did the right thing there. I kind of feel like we didn't, but at the same time, what else was I going to do? Like, do we destroy their culture to save them? Maybe. It might have been the right thing to do, but it would have destroyed their culture. Which seems like one more terrible thing for humans to do to their... species. So... Uh, I don't know. No good options there. No good options. Zhang, you have anything else to say? Nope. Cool. Alright. Fortunately, we do have one thing where I can be certain of what the right option is. We're going to go to the Cathedral of the Stolen Gods and we're going to steal the Carnival Heart. And we're probably going to end up destroying it. Unless, of course, I can use it as an engine, which I suspect I can. In which case, yay! I get a new engine. Could you not? Eh. One to the left, one down, and then left and further left. And... Eh, eh, no. Mm, there we go. Yes. More things falling from the ceiling, as they tend to. Okay, it's four. Four more rooms of this. Nope. Not dealing with you today. Also, I'm kind of surprised that my... In well, I guess my insight isn't that great, so... Let's bump that up, because... Yeah. We could use it. Nope, and that was the last of my uh, apprehensions, so... Hope it was worth it. We did get it up to six more, so, you know. Hopefully we'll make use of it. Well, I'm, let me rephrase that. I'm sure we'll make use of it. Hopefully we'll make use of it 
sooner rather than later. Uh, oop. Did my math wrong. Or more accurately, didn't pay attention. Eh. There we go. Hmm? Aw. You're saying a lot of things all in rapid succession, and I'm not navigating this thing properly. Yeah, I gotta pay more attention. Less attention to the notes, more attention to the actual driving of this thing. Could you stop doing that? Alright. The Cathedral of Stolen Gods. It spires scrapes the ceiling. Its stained glass windows depict slaughter and triumph. Every arch, every buttress, every gable and gallery is groaning under dozens of symbols or instruments of war. Spikes, cannons, human skulls. The cathedral rests not on foundations, but on caterpillar treads, each a mile in length. Atop its sagging spire flutters a defiant black banner, the skull in crossed crosiers. Head inside. Double doors yawn open at your approach. And visit the Omnipope, because I... Hmm. I am curious. The Omnipope sits in a luxuriant room at the top of the cathedral's central spire, a room filled with silk cushions, gem-studded trinkets, and above it all a golden chandelier. He's a vastly obese man, the size and shape of an overstuffed sofa, with a braided beard that reaches his ankles. His eyes are hidden behind garishly colorful stained glass spectacles. He's puffing something from a long wooden pipe. The unmistakable fug of god smoke fills the air. How may I help you, child? Asks the Omnipope, his voice slurred. Hmm... According to legend, the Omnipope is over a hundred years old, and fought, and fought personally in the thief crusades that once ravaged the house. Hmm. Deary me. A new light comes into the Omnipope's eyes with great satisfaction and tells you stories of the old days, back before the cathedral's engine broke down. He paints a picture of all his most brutal conquests, villages burned to the ground, holy books ripped from their lecterns, Enemy priests forced to blaspheme and then burned alive if they refused. Leave. Hmm. I guess not. That would only be a hundred years old and that doesn't, you know, push the bounds of possibility too far. Steal the carnivore heart. The almost completed engine that rumbles like a monster beneath the Cathedral of Stolen Gods. I want it. We have about twenty minutes before the pirate priests notice I'm missing, says Twelve, sliding in through the window of your canetopede. Hello, Lucetta, by the way. Long time no see. Nice hat. Howdy, Twelve, says Lucetta with an enormous grin. Good to see you, too. What's life in like in the cathedral since I left? Oh, you know, says Twelve. The usual, but with less sparkle. He pulls a blueprint of the cathedral from his slave rags. Time to plan. Hmm. The carnivore heart is stored in the cathedral's dungeons, says Lucetta. The divine wards are gone, thanks to your efforts, but there are still some protections we need to overcome. It's guarded by a golem built from the bones of saints. One of us will have to destroy the thing. We also need to organize a slave uprising to keep the pirate priests distracted. And finally, we'll need someone to actually smuggle the heart back to the canetopede without alerting the guards. Twelve starts to hum something under his breath, a tune you vaguely recognize. Why are you humming the fifth ode to Bezheleth? Heth? Oh dear. I had the chance to memorize the fifth ode before I smuggled it to you, says Twelve. You return the relics of some unsanctioned gods to their rightful owners. The least they could do is grant us a favor in return, eh? We're gonna need it. He lenses at you oddly. Didn't Lucetta tell you about this part of the plan? And as he speaks, you feel something fluttering in your pocket. You pull out Libra Stasis' black card, flapping back and forth as though in a strong wind. A good plan is only revealed at the last minute. Lucetta holds up her slim hand with the symbol of Elegan burned into the palm. It's glowing gold and it is never wise to preemptively assume a god's favor. They are fickle beings. We can choose which of us gets which, says Twelve. How about you, Brian Bright? Whose favor would you prefer? Absolutely Librosteus. Love that guy. Then I shall take the favor of the fifth ode, says Lucetta. Leave me with Elegan, says Twelve. Excellent. I've always wondered what it'd be like to have tusks, and who will be doing what? I don't know. I think I can steal the carnivore heart. I think that's what I'm better at. Um, yeah. Volunteer to steal it. Lucetta rummages in her wardrobe, producing three chainmail robes. I've been working on these for a while, she says proudly. 
If we wear them and pull the hoods up, we should look like pirate priests. Might be enough to get us into the dungeons. Sneak into the cathedral. Burly pirate priests guard the doors. Hmm. At the cathedral's doors, the three of you are stopped by a guard with a face like a tumorous tomato. He looks you up and down suspiciously. Oi, he says. I don't remember seeing any new tanks rolling in. How do I know you're one of us? Recite the names of the swollen pantheon, all of them, and pronounce them all right. By the 19th deity, he's clearly had enough. Go on through, he mutters, withdrawing. In the cathedral beyond, hundreds of icons dangle from the walls. Pirate priests fight and drink and roar with laughter. You make your way to one of the twisty, deserted side quarters and pull open a trap door. Good work, whispers Lucetta. Head to the dungeons. The carnival heart waits below. Hmm. Well, beneath the halls of the cathedral, beneath its vast tank treads, are a maze of tiny torchlit catacombs that spool chaotically around a vast central atrium. Here the engine slaves toil. Skulls line the walls. Dry bat bones crunch underfoot. You, Lucetta, and Twelve separate at a fork in the tunnel to each deal with your respective tasks. There's only time for a hurried, whispered goodbye. You hurry on alone, heart racing. You make your way to the central atrium where the carnivore heart beats and growls. It hangs in the center of the hall, fed by a hundred copper pipes and dangling veins, pulsing, dripping, wheezing. A twisted hybrid of engine and organ, split, among, split along the middle by a drooling row of fangs. It's the same size as you. How can you take this thing without being seen? Hmm. Success is unlikely, though, so invoking the favor of Liberosteus. Oh, don't give me any of this shit. You invoke the favor of Liberosteus, the tailbinder, and stow away the carnival heart in the folds of your billowing black cloak. You glide up to the cathedral above, your blunt bone jaws clacking. The pirate priests scurry before you like ants. You open your cloak, and a legion of lost souls rush forth like a tide, whispering and wailing. The pirate priests curl up on the floor, gibbering and scratching their faces. You drift over them in a god dream, assaulted by visions of writhing tentacles and unlit depths. When you snap out of it, you find yourself back at the Kinetopede. Well, we'll wait to see if all is gone to plan for Lucetta in Twelve. Hmm. Lucetta stumbles into the Kinetopede moments later, pale and shivering. It's quite a thing, isn't it? The favor of a god. I can still taste it at the back of my mouth. Joy and power and despair. She pauses when she sees the carnivore heart, pulsating and groaning on the floor. And there it is, she says. Well done. Faint screams from the Cathedral of Stolen Gods. Smoke churns from its steeple. One of the stained glass windows shatters as the slaves hurl a fat pirate priest out of the window. Out onto the spikes far below. Ooh. I thought it was just out of the window. Ooh. Where's Twelve? asks Lucetta finally. A shout from the cathedral. A blimp sized figure stands on one of the upper balconies, roaring for your attention. His voice bounces off the walls. Ah. Ah. Ah, oh, had I known! The Omnipope stands out on his balcony, robes flapping, stained glass spectacles glimmering. One huge hand is wrapped around the throat of a badly beaten figure you barely recognize as Twelve. Lucetta, Brian Bright, his voice cracks like thunder. You have five minutes, return the carnivore heart, or I kill your accomplice. He dangles Twelve over the massive drop like a toy. Lucetta laughs darkly, the laugh of someone staring into an abyss. We have to give it back, she says hollowly. Twelve trusted us. We can't leave him to die. Motherfucker. Had I known, I would just have gotten the gunpowder. Like if I had any way of predicting this. <sighs> Save this stupid kid's life. You make the exchange a few minutes later. You, Lucetta, the Omnipope, our circle of angry pirate priests. Behind them, the cathedral is still smoking and sloughing rubble. You may keep the slave. The Omnipope grabs Twelve and shoves him forward. Setting him tum stumbling to his knees in front of you. Now, the carnivore heart. Lucetta drags it out, staring at the Omni Pope with revulsion. He claps his huge hands together, and a group of pirate priests haul it back into the cathedral. Rest assured, says the Omni Pope, adjusting his stained glass spectacles. When the cathedral is moving again, we'll come after the gods you stole. He turns and swaggers away. Come on, says Lucetta, heaving twelve over her shoulder. <sighs> Jean Bouchot is tending to twelve in the surgery. You sit beside the engine with Lucetta, sharing a commiserative bottle of wine. We tried our best, she says. Ah, hell, we tried our best, and we got twelve out of there. 
pours herself a generous glass. I won't lose a minute of sleep over rescuing a friend, no matter the cost. Mmm. She sips her wine and settles back, rubbing her aching limbs. <sighs> I'm a little bit mad, actually. I feel like I should have had some, like, simple inclination that, oh yeah, you might be able to blow it up. Or something, you know? Some hint would have been nice. Uh, but, oh well. Oh well. We at least saved someone from the cathedral, so I suppose that's gonna have to be good enough. For now, though. Thank you for your time. Know the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly. And I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.